Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday afternoon. Hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to today, but first, we just hit 2,450 YouTube subscribers. I want to give a shout out to all the subscribers. Big boost in the last couple of days. And as always, special tip of the cap goes to the channel members, especially elite channel members Y2KHA, Brandon McKell, Rip, Scott T Todd, Hasher for MVP, VGK Tiger 75, and Salacious Crumb. All right, so we spent a little bit of time talking about the suddenly overhauled coaching staff for the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, I wanted to make videos about the coaches we were getting rid of and the coaches we were bringing in because, hey, that stuff is very important. But now that that's had an opportunity to settle in and we've replaced most of the vacancies, it's time to go back to the videos that I was expecting to populate this offseason with. So first, we're going to start looking at the upcoming Seahawks free agents and try to figure out what we can expect those players to reasonably ask for in terms of a new contract. So you guys may remember a few months ago, I made a video about Chris Carson, the money he will probably be asking for, and the money we can reasonably expect to need to give him if we want to keep him. So if you don't remember that video <clears throat> or you never watched it in the first place, just go back in the archives it's a few months back, um, basically asking the question, how much will it cost to keep Chris Carson? So that was a preview for the videos I'm going to be making this offseason. So the idea is I'm going to go through the Seahawks lineup and talk about every full-time or most of the time starter and basically try to figure out how much will it cost to keep that player by looking at other similar players and their contracts. And... After that, we're going to loop back around and take a look at the part-time starters or the decent depth players who are also upcoming free agents. So with that in mind, we're going to start with Ethan Posick, the starting center and imminent free agent. <clears throat> now, real quick, I will be skipping Mike Upati, who did start most of the games for the Seahawks in 2020 because I'm sure he's going to retire, and even if he doesn't, this team shouldn't bring him back, and I don't think they will. There's no point. So I'm not really going to talk about Mike Upati. If we do bring him back, it will not be as a starter. So going to skip that. Going to go to Posick. All right, so let's get to know Ethan Posick a little bit. First of all, he's been with the team for four years. He was a relatively high draft pick. Uh, the first three years are just a mess. He didn't play well at all when he played. He didn't play that much. And the reason why we're having this discussion right now is because he became the starting center in 2020 and played pretty well. <clears throat> he gave us 14 games. Uh, first half of the season, he was playing at a very high level. Second half of the season, didn't play that great. Uh, he did get a concussion. Maybe that was affecting his play. We don't know. But regardless, he has basically a one half of a good season to show for his four-year career so far, which doesn't sound great. But when you consider the fact he was playing out of position for three years and the fact that he was playing through the potential lingering after effects of a concussion in the second half of 2020, maybe. Maybe there's something there. It's hard to know. But anyway, so let's dig deeper into Ethan Postick as much as we reasonably can. So let's take a look at his 2020 season only because uh, <clears throat> I'll spoil it for you. If you go back on his PFF profile beyond just 2020, it's it's not good. And he didn't play all that much anyway. So just 2020, he played almost 1,000 snaps at center, had one penalty, which is really good, and he allowed two sacks, which is quite good. His pro football focus grade, and I tell people all the time to not take pro football focus too seriously, but it's better than a lot of other things you can use when you're evaluating offensive linemen, is 62.4. It was a lot higher before the second half of the season. I'll, I'll say that. So... Basically, he's above average workable starter based off the 2020 season as a whole. But again, you have to split his 2020 into kind of two clear sections. All right, so now we have some idea of what Ethan Posick has done so far in his career. And we have some idea of what he might think of himself as. Now, for us to say Ethan Posick is really good would be to only look at the seven or eight games he was playing really well in before he got concussed. So I don't know if we can do that, but that gives us an idea of the potential of Ethan Posick. And with that potential in mind, let's go ahead and start taking a look at some centers who have recently gotten contract extensions. 
So on Spotrack, we have here a list of centers with the highest value contracts currently. And obviously, we're not really going to be looking at anybody at the top of the list. These are the elite players, the pro bowlers, the all pros. Ethan Postick is not in their orbit. He's not even close. He will not be getting any kind of a contract in this realm. So we're going to skip a lot of these names. And we're going to try to hone in on what Postick's value might actually be. A decent center who has had basically one good year and is nowhere near a pro bowler. And might not even be good for all we know. So... We're also going to be trying to keep it to contracts signed in the last year or two. We're going to be avoiding taking a look at contracts signed three or four years ago because they're not indicative of anything interesting to us. All right, so we're going to go through this list, and our first stopping point is going to be Chase Roulier, the center for the football team who signed his extension last year. And it was a pretty big one, four years, over $10 million a year slightly, so very well paid, very well compensated center for the football team. So Chase Roulier, he came into the NFL the same year as Ethan Posick, but as you can see, he's played more. This first year, he played about half the snaps. This next year, he was a full-time starter. The next year, full-time starter. And this last year, after he signed the deal, a full-time starter. And if you take a look at 2019, which was the last year he played before he got the extension, he had a PFF grade of 69.3, so markedly better than Posick. So all around, Chase Roulier was a much better player who deserved a much bigger contract than Ethan Posick does now. So I don't think we're particularly close yet. So let's go back to the list here. Let's go ahead and clear the Chase Roulette thing um, and scroll down, 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 trying to find something that we can use. All right, next name we're going to take a look at here is Connor McGovern a center who signed a free agency deal with the Jets in last offseason. So Connor McGovern, he came into the league the same year Ethan Posick did. This first year he played some, but he was playing at right guard, which is interesting because that's kind of the same thing Posick was doing. This next year, full-time starter at right guard. And then in 2019, he became the full-time center. And as the full-time center in 2019, if you go to his PFF grade, 72. Really good. So again, not very comparable to Ethan Posick. We're moving on. All right, now we're going to keep going through the list. Next up, next guy we're going to take a look at here going through is Ben Jones, who signed his free agency contract last, uh, two years ago, actually. So it's been a couple years. Um, the market has changed a little bit since Ben Jones signed this contract. Also, when Ben Jones signed this contract, he was also rather young. Uh, excuse me. Not young, old. So not totally comparable to Ethan Posick, but let's take a look at Ben Jones here real quick. He's in a different spot because he was a longtime veteran when he signed this extension. You can see he was a Texan for four years, and he played a lot, actually. Um, in t and then he signed with the Titans and was a full-time center starter for them for a while. And then when he signed the extension, he was coming off a 2018 season in which he actually soared out extremely well. 72.7, almost 73. So I don't think we're quite there yet. So Ben Jones seems to have clearly been in a position where he was worth a lot more than Posick was at this point. So we're going to go ahead and clear Ben Jones. And now we start to get to some rookies. And the rookies, we're not really going to be able to use for anything meaningful because their contracts are dictated by the rookie scale. So guys like Bradbury, Cesar Ruiz, Ragno. Not really useful to us, so we're going to keep going. All right. Spencer Pulley signed a three-year, $8 million deal with the Giants coming off the 2018 season. Let's take a look here. Spencer Pulley came into the league in 2016, played a little bit for the Chargers, but didn't start. And then the next year, he did become a starter. He started 16 games at center for the now Los Angeles Chargers, and at this point, he became a New York Giant and started most of the season. So let's take a look at Spencer Pulley and the year he had to earn the contract extension. 58.3. And this got him a three-year, $8 million contract. Okay. Okay, we're getting warmer now. Um, Spencer Pulley is a completely un was, at least at this point, a relatively unremarkable player who started a decent number of games and grinded out a pretty respectable season, was a 
workable starter, but not too much more than that. I think we're starting to get a little warmer here. All right, just so we can further put things into context, let's go to the next name on this list, a guy that we're familiar with. B.J. Finney. We know that we gave him a two-year, $8 million contract coming off his 2019 season uh, from Pittsburgh. Now, he never did anything for us, and then we traded him very quickly, so it ended up not really meaning anything. But let's go ahead and take a look at what B.J. Finney had done to earn this contract. So B.J. Finney had been a long-time, part-time player for the Steelers, or not long time, but a decent chunk of time. He spent four years starting a few games here and there and coming in as a reserve an awful lot. And <clears throat> based off what he did as a reserve in Pittsburgh, we gave him that two-year, $8 million deal. Uh, what did he do to earn that in 2019? Well, he didn't play a ton, but his PFF grade was about 57. So we're in the right ballpark now. So, B.J. Finney and Spencer Pulley seem to be the most reasonable comparisons that we have. And Posig, you know, he's got a history of being injury prone, which gives him something in common with Spencer Pulley. He had already bit, get, gotten bit by the injury bug before he signed this contract. So, I think we have our reasonable comparisons for Posig. To recap, Spencer Pulley, three years, $8 million. B.J. Finney, two years, $8 million. So based off this, based off the fact that the salary cap is expected to fall this upcoming offseason, I think the most reasonable expectation is that Ethan Posick is going to command more than Spencer Pulley's $2.66 million a year, but less than BJ Finney's $4 million a year. So I would put a reasonable Ethan Posick extension at something like two years six and a half million, maybe three years, nine million. Uh, that would be my best guess as of right now. And at that price, I would be strongly tempted to keep him around. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it was educational for you. Peace out. Go Hawks. Next up, we will be continuing to cut through the upcoming free agent starters for the Seahawks. And yeah. That's how I see the Ethan Posick free agency saga probably shaking out. If you guys have a different take, let me know in the comments, and see you guys in stream tonight.